Well, it's Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today I said we were going to start looking more into valves and stuff. And in this bag, I have, well, what looks to be quite a fuck valve. You can't see anything, so we're going to master zoom. And that is a rod, that is not a valve. This is a valve. Known as a poppet valve, these things have been around for bloody donkey's years and they, like I said, they take one another hammering and they very, very rarely fail, especially on the scale of things. You might have an, en an entire engine, but that entire engine can have 18 valves, 16 valves, 4 valves, 2 valves, you, you know what I mean? But the vast number of them that repeatedly operate um, in extreme conditions, not just opening and closing, 166 times a second or whatever um, it's quite a high uh, stressed environment there's you know it's uh, the impact of slamming into the valve seat now because of the valve the cam profile and the way that the spring exerts force and stuff like that and resonance and all this and the other it doesn't exactly slam into the valve seat and we're going to go into that into more detail of exactly what goes on and then we're going to deviate just before that video we're going to split up into two video series is because we've got intake and exhaust and you know it's very different um environments and uh well just environments basically but the environmental effects um so what I'm, what are people a lot of people don't tend to think about is uh what the valve also has to push out of the way, which sometimes is air. So, as a valve is closing, the air pressure around that valve um, can be, it's different from one period through its cycle than another. The other thing as well is flow direction. And there is, especially at these high RPM and stuff, there's uh, a lot of the airflow has quite a lot of inertia, the inertial filling, stuff like that. So with inertial filling, if it can overcome the uh, pressure in the cylinder, you know, as you're on the compression stroke, that's quite a um, amount of pressure to overcome for the valve to fight against, um, you know. And it, it, it works to its benefit and against it sometimes and so on and so on. But we're going to have a look at that in the future, Regard in the near future. Regardless, um, this is off the NTV, and let me master zoom you. All right, there we go. So, this valve is a example of um, one of the reasons why your uh, valve adjustment needs to be adjusted. So your valve clearances. So if we just come back for a second, you have a camshaft. So you have the base circle and then you have the flanks and the nose, stuff like that of the actual camshaft. And then below that you have a valve stem, usually with a set of collets in it, and so on. Regardless of what the arrangement is, if this is a um, Desmo or anything else like that, or exactly how the springs are arranged, blah, blah, blah. If you have a cam follower system, be it with uh, rockers, be it with push rods and rockers, be it with buckets over under shims, be it with fingers, so on and so forth. Um, when the the if you think about the turning circle of the valve, so let's just say it's like this. It's a bit not the best drawing in the world, but on the fly it'll do. There needs to be a clearance uh, in here. And there needs to be a clearance for a couple of reasons, right? The clearance is, everyone goes, oh, well, the clearance is there because of thermal expansion. That's not true. Um, the clearance is there not because of thermal expansion. The clearance or part of the clearance is defined by or because of thermal expansion. In other words, Thermal expansion, you have to take into consideration thermal expansion to get the number that is going to give you what you actually require. The reason why you require a clearance, is that dry? Now, the reason why you require a clearance at all is because you do not want the valve or the cam um, 
in a sense resting so you don't want it to rest in its rest position against where the cow is going to sit so for instance what does that mean I said we have the base circle like so and then for all intents and purposes massively exaggerating it we have a big cam nose sticking out like this now this cam profile here all the way around the base circle in a sense we don't want the valve constantly in contact with that so it's not even fucking square uh, we don't want the valve stem in contact with this because otherwise that means that the valve is resting or it's resting against the camshaft it means two things it means one that the springs are forcing against the cam constantly which we don't want we don't want that force against the cam whatsoever uh, number two is it means that the valve won't seat against the seat properly so at the other end we want the, the valve um, face on the valve and the seat to be in contact we also want a preload against that we want the spring to apply a pressure between the valve and the valve seat if at this end you're already touching the camshaft um, then you you, you, won't, you know you won't seal it these things are tight or that accurate not only that is obviously when things do thermally expand then it's just going to push the valve open so this is why they're very important it's not just to stop excessive forces on the cam it's not just there to it's actually for the engine operation to make sure that on the compression stroke that everything's closed on the power stroke everything's closed because otherwise you're just going to get combustion gases going bang straight out up your intake and it's just going to turn to complete shit so we want to keep these valve clear we want to have a clearance full stop you know what i mean we want to have if we just, you know, fuck it, bugger it, man. We want to have a clearance in there, and then we have to then add some extra clearance because of thermal expansion. Now you'll notice on your valves because the, your exhaust valves because they got they get hotter. Your clearances are even larger. Now it's that difference. So if you look at the difference between your intake clearance and your your exhaust clearance, that is the bit that's taken into consideration of the differing temperature. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. So, we have a clearance of 50 microns for the intake. So this is the intake. And let's just say, for the exhaust, we need a clearance of uh, 70. 70 microns just plucking these numbers out of nowhere they don't have to be you know true to any engine or anything like that so we've got an intake and we've got an exhaust the difference between the two let's just say the exhaust valve reaches a temperature it goes from zero let's just say to zero because of port chilling to 200 degrees c all right and let's just say the difference from the exhaust valve is zero when the engine just sits there all the way up to I don't know let's just say 850 oops, 850 degrees C like that I'll give a lid 850 degrees C yeah that is the difference so uh, not the difference that isn't the difference the difference is 650 right so the difference between these two is 650 now if you look at the two numbers the difference is 20 microns so it's 0 0.02 uh, millimeters 20 microns this is the difference for this thermal change right that is the clearance there so if you see well it's two millimeters it's two 20 microns or zero point let's just put 20 microns for the sake. it's 20 microns there for this change a 650 degree change so obviously going from 0 to 200 that's not 650 that's 200 so why is this already at 0 0.5 if we just took this difference our 20 microns change here like that and we looked at our intake like this we're still 30 microns clear yeah i mean that's what would still be there would still be there's still a clearance of 30 microns 
So, people ask me a lot of the time, they say, Matt, I've got these valves and they have a clearance of, they, they spec out a clearance and they say any clearance between, I don't know, just say 50 microns or, um, they'll say this, that to 0 0.035 millimeters they'll say where should i aim in this the biggest always go for the biggest what they're telling you here is that this is the range that is okay you know what i mean but if you measure it out and you get 0 0.038 just say then you're really close to not being okay <laughs> so always aim for this number now you might say well matt the only you know the only thing i can measure to is just say whatever you know or the only shims i could get don't go bigger than this you know this is why it's a range you know it's here and here and this is uh, 50 and this is 35 you know anywhere out of here is a no and anywhere out of here is a no just remember that this one, the smallest clearance, is going to cause you the most problems with your engine. It'll just start splittering and bogging down and being all shit and all sorts. And you'll get fucking weird things happening like it uh, gets to certain revs and it starts being a dickhead. And you'll, you'll, you might do a compression test and get low compression. You know, you start thinking, oh, what the fuck's going on? But it's this clearance that's fucking you over. But why? Why does, generally speaking... Nine times out of ten, it go this way. How come the clearance gets smaller? So that's what this NTV valve is a very good demonstration of. I'll get some pictures and put them up. Um, but what I'll do is right here is I'll draw out what what it looks like. The camera, I don't think is going to give us a good good view of what's going on. But if I feel across this this valve. What we have is we have the back of the valve like so, and then we have the face there that's, you know, it's at 45 degrees like that. Then we have just a little lift and then we have the underside and it just comes back like this. And it is dimpled in the middle slightly, but meh, forget that shite. So this is what the valve, oh, fucking hell, you can't even see. Do you see that? That slightly. <laughs> that's how it's moving the camera. It's like subliminal. Sublim dodgy fucking advertising. <laughs> I'm fucking knackered today. Regardless, what you can see actually is this is what the valve should look like, and it's actually recessed in. Right, so it doesn't look like that, like the purple. It actually looks like this. Right, and you can feel it. You can really feel it. And um, yeah, it's chewed in. And like I said, I'll see if I can get any pictures. Not as it chewed in, it's, it's, starting, to, it's starting to go slightly dished as well. And that's because the valve starts to rock. Now, this is two things. That's slightly. That's a bad example. Let's blow it up. Let's. <laughs> with some fucking. Gel ignite. I mean, <laughs> let's over exaggerate this. So basically, it's got flank sides like this, it's eating into the valve and then it's dished. Yeah, obviously, that's massively over exaggerated. So, what's happening here is that this chewy chewy going down into the valve is because the heart, the valve seat is harder than the valve. As they smash into each other, it just starts to collapse and it's basically forging it, but it chips off and it just fucking it, it's turning, so it's abrasive and all sorts of shit happening. And a lot of it actually is just the rotation as the valves slowly rotate through operations and sometimes they start moving. Not on the sometimes on the spot between actuations, but as they come and sit back down, shit and sand gets in your engine. That's why all air filters are a fucking must. Stuff like that, people cutting L's in their air boxes are fucking complete wankers. You know, stuff like that. As you wear away, you know, the valve can now go higher. You know, it used to stop here. So that's where it used to stop. That's where the valve used to stop 
now it can move all the way down to here and stop. So if basically the seat is fixed, the valve goes higher into the head, which means that this clearance closes up. Now these tips wear, these tips wear on the end of these, these have been heat treated, but they do wear and stuff like that. So that should make the valve clearance get bigger and the cam wears or the follower or whatever wears, and that should make it get bigger. However, there's one other thing going on, which is the valve seat is slowly getting hammered in into the head. The uh, heads are cast aluminium, so they're not bloody brilliant at the at best of times. And that valve seat is not, that's wearing slightly as well, but it's also getting hammered and it's hot. It's hot and it's slowly getting hammered, 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 hammered into the head. Now its progression might be 50 microns over the lifetime of the engine, but with our clearances, that's an entire, from the beginning, you know, from manufacturer, uh, from what the clearance is meant to be, to touching, you know, no clearance whatsoever. Forgetting thermal expansion. So 50 microns, it might hammer in the head over 100,000 miles, but that's quite a lot, you know what I mean? Um, and we've got to shim and do all the rest of it accordingly. Uh, there's, you know, so the, way, the rate of wear on here with the valve seat recession into the head and the wear on the actual surface here, them two compounded against just this tip wearing and the camshaft and stuff, just it can't compete. So usually what happens is, is your valve clearances start to shrink. The dishing, you can actually see on here, on this valve, like I said, I'll take some pictures there, you can see that, you see that flash? Master zoom. You can see there, there's a flash, you see there, this is where, where the valve wears there's a bit of wearing down here, but this basically means that the valve can tip as well. It can just basically wiggle in the valve guide. The valve guide starts to wear out, the valve starts to wear out, so you get a bit of side to side, and that's where this slight radius comes from um, on, th on the actual, basically the ceiling surface of the valve. Now I've given these a little bit of a lap, uh, just to see how bad the pitting was and stuff like that, because this thing had been sat and rusted for fucking ever. Uh, but we are going to, you know, refit these and stuff. Like I say, the whole point of the zombie and the zombie project or the zombie engine project is to get the thing. How fuck can it be and still get it running? Because we have that C cylinder, uh, cylinder and stuff. Regardless, this has gone on for long enough. But um, hopefully, I can get some really good pictures and you can see how much this has hammered, uh, how much this shape has chewed into this um, original material. Hope that makes sense. We've got a lot more to do on this. Like I say, we're going to start talking about valves and we're going to talk about what people call aggressive cams and uh, jerk and stuff like that and the acceleration of cams and blah, blah, blah and all the things cam related. And then we're going to move on to some uh, Desmo stuff. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.